in the Bush administration, I mean, if you go through each one of them and say, where were you when the golden hour came? Dick Cheney, fly fishing, Phil Carl Rove, nowhere around. Um, you have a Chernoff going to Atlanta on a disease prevention um, kick. I mean, you see Condoleezza Rice shopping. What was Dr. Condoleezza Rice doing that looked very poorly? She was at Ferragamo's buying shoes. I think a white patron came up to her, maybe a white woman, and said, how dare you? While people are down there drowning, it was like the Sandman hook. Whoop, she got pulled off, brother. That was, that was a mini Apollo stage, and she wasn't hitting it. So they pulled her off stage. Then she goes to Spamalot that night, and when the cameras frame her familiar figure, once the lights come on, and they see it's Dr. Condoleezza Rice, boo, they begin to boo her. And then the next day, she's hitting tennis balls with Monica Sellis uh, at a club. So Blonix, Broadway, and balls are more important than black people who look like her for this woman from Birmingham. I am an African American. I'm from Alabama. I can tell you that this response is not a response about color. This is a response about Americans helping Americans. No American wants to see another American suffer. Ray Nagin. What, what happened? You dropped the ball. Then I would tell, say the same thing to the governor. Ms. Blanco, what were you thinking about? You know, what, what the hell was going on? Then I would ask Bush, you're out of touch and you don't have a clue. You know, he's the type of person that gives C students all over the world a bad name. And here he was in Biloxi, feeling the pain of some of the survivors. He's very good at this. But many feel he should have done it much earlier. Then the question that may well come to haunt him in his second term, the war in Iraq and Hurricane Katrina, the perfect storm. What do you say to the people who say there's too much money being spent on Iraq and country? I, 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 I just completely disagree. We've got a job to defend this country in the war on terror, and we've got a job to bring aid and comfort to the people of the Gulf Coast, and we'll do both. I'll never forget I went to a, one of the uh, shelters in Shreveport, Louisiana, and I met a man named Daniel Webster. I will never forget him. And he was sitting there, and he said to me, he said, you know, Reverend, he said, my wife was wheelchair bound. When I heard the storm coming, I ran to the door, and I knew I was in trouble because I took my finger and I tapped the doorknob, and I tasted the water. It was salt water, so I knew that the waters from the river was coming. He said, so but before I could run back, to where my wife was, I looked outside and saw my car floating. And before I could reach my wife, the door came off the hinges and water was everywhere. He said, I finally grabbed a chair and pushed her up to the roof of the uh, house. And I held as long as I could, and I couldn't hold no longer. And I watched my wife's wheelchair just go with the flow and watch her drown as a tree branch held me for 12 hours. He said, the only thing I don't know is why God didn't just let me die. I have nothing to live for. These are the kinds of things we had to listen to. And then turn on the news that night, and George Bush and Michael Brown are talking politics. They didn't have information. They were waiting on reports. They could have done what we did. Go right there and talk to the people. Activate the National Guard. Activate the military. Oh, I forgot. They were in Iraq making democracy free for those abroad, while those at home had nothing.